I must have looked utterly bizarre, standing under the stars. I'm sure under any other circumstances, the sight of a completely naked, dripping wet 16-year-old girl standing with closed eyes in the middle of the night would be hardly short of distressing. When I was 13, a set of registration papers informed me I had the option to participate in the sweat lodge at the Unitarian Universalist family camp I attended every summer. Somehow, the idea of co-ed multi-generational sweaty nudity did not appeal to me at the time. It was three years later when I decided to attend my first sweat. The sweat lodge looked more like a five-foot dome strewn with tarp than a lodge. But a few yards away was a fire that lit up midnight and put eyebrows within a three-foot radius in danger of singed removal. It had been burning for hours, so by 11 at night, the engulfed rocks would be incandescent to the core. Crews of campers flocked down to the sweat lodge solely to bask in the fire's roaring glory. Teenagers, young adults, and middle-aged folk chatted and played charades in the haven of the heat and light created by the massive flames. Just after a ridiculous silent rendition of Jurassic Park, Nick, the 20-year-old youth advisor and sweat lodge leader, informed us that the rocks were hot enough and proceeded to take off his clothes. Everyone else who was participating in the sweat followed without hesitation, as simple and polite as removing a hat before dinner. Gone were sweatshirts, shoes, socks, pants, shirts, boxers, briefs, bras, panties, naked. You guys can start going in there now. The now nude Nick informed us as he prodded the fire with a shovel. We crawled one by one into the small opening of the lodge. A flashlight revealed that there was just enough space for the seven of us to sit cross-legged, knee to knee, on the cool dirt around the small pit in the middle. As three or four goose egg-sized rocks were placed in the pit with a shovel, we spoke words of welcome. When the flashlight was turned off and the opening was covered by thick layers of tarp, the rock's vibrant orange glow was all I could see. They glimmered at us, as though each one contained its own burning hot galaxy. The small space was immediately overcome with intense heat. When the water from three wet bay leaves was sprinkled on the rocks, they hissed gently in satisfaction and let loose a plume of steam and the faint aroma of bay and earth. Soon the air was thick with steam and heat. We endured the heat. We enjoyed the heat. We breathed the heat. We chanted the heat. Earth my body, water my blood, air my breath and fire my spirit. Time no longer existed. The damp earth beneath my bare skin and the sips of cool water from the communal jugs seemed like the only things in the world that weren't made of sweltering steam. Even my body was just a shell for the pure gaseous water that replaced my insides as I inhaled and chanted. It was only when I felt a bead of moisture roll down my chest that I realized I was completely dripping with sweat, and I had never felt cleaner in my life. Just when I thought I might not be able to handle the thick humidity any longer, the chanting stopped, and the tarp was pulled away from the opening. Steam whooshed out of the sweat lodge's womb, bringing us along with its tide. We ran down to the nearby creek and plunged into the icy water. We clambered out on weak knees and proceeded toward the still roaring fire. For a reason I cannot fully understand, I abruptly stopped halfway. Frigid water dripped in a pulse off my body, down my fingertips and between my toes. It flowed deep into the soil, rooting me to the earth. The chill night breeze breathed on my naked skin and yet I felt a tingling warmth. I closed my eyes. It was unlike anything else I had ever experienced. All noises became one harmonious orchestra. Everything on earth, part of the earth, interconnected. It didn't make sense, but I could feel it. It felt like nature. It felt like awe. It felt like pure cleansed 100% aliveness. And it was nothing short of beautiful. <laughs>